In 1776, the First Continental Congress selected a committee of Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson to design the Great Seal of the United States of America. It was the task of these founding fathers to select a symbol that best reflected the character of our new country. It was John Adams who suggested the bald eagle, which ultimately became the symbol. Benjamin Franklin was not impressed. For my own part, I wish the bald eagle had not been chosen the representative of our country. For the truth, the turkey is in comparison a much more respectable bird, and withal a true original native of America. He is besides, though a little vain and silly, a bird of courage who would not hesitate to attack a grenadier or the British guards who should presume to invade his farmyard with a red coat on. Wild turkey had been found in abundance throughout the eastern United States and on this land we today call Missouri. For generations, Native Americans held them in high regard and harvested them as a primary source of food and ornamentation. Trappers were among the first Europeans to come up the Missouri. Exploring the Great River and its tributaries in search of beaver, wild turkey provided a ready source of food. Just as we today expect to find a fast food restaurant around the corner or along the next highway exit, wilderness travelers could be confident of locating a wild turkey around the next river bend. It was estimated that North America supported as many as 10 million wild turkeys. There seemed to be no reason for farmers to raise domestic turkeys, since wild birds were so plentiful. By 1900, Western expansion was beginning to take its toll. We made some pretty drastic changes in the landscape. We, we cut over a lot of the virgin forests. We had free-ranging hogs and cattle. Every time an acorn would hit the ground, there'd be something else there to grab it before a deer or a turkey could be there. Uncontrolled burning, market hunting, other pressures turkeys just didn't respond well to. And uh, as a result, we saw a rapid decline take place. Probably about 250,000 wild turkeys when European settlers first showed up on the landscape of Missouri. And then the population declined to about probably 2,500 by 1952. This bird, which had been so close to becoming the symbol of our nation, was now close to extinction. In 1937, the newly formed Missouri Department of Conservation closed the hunting season for wild turkey. Farm-raised turkeys were used to restock the dwindling populations, but they didn't survive in the wild. I've seen a picture of when they pulled up the truck, let the birds out, and then there's pictures of all these turkeys just kind of standing around. It was, wasn't very successful because you can imagine what happened to those turkeys. They lasted about one day before a predator or some kind ate them. The only solution seemed to lie in protecting existing populations in the hopes that they would grow it to produce enough native wild birds to restock unoccupied areas. The Department of Conservation bought a large tract of land in the southern Ozarks, where there were still a few native turkeys. Habitat was restored to provide food and cover. We really started getting serious about restocking wild turkeys in 1954. I think at that point we recognized that we needed some wild birds. Peck Ranch was an area that had some wild birds in it, had some good habitat. We managed that habitat to grow the population and then would siphon off uh, a few birds each year, continuing to grow the population, but taking some birds to recolonize other areas of the state. One of the biggest obstacles was being able to capture wild turkeys in numbers that were sufficient to move them you know, as a family unit or as enough males and females together to recolonize another population. 
with the advent of rocket nets, then this could take place. Whereas before then they would catch them in deer traps or however they could and, and it was very difficult. It's basically you have a net that's 40 by 60 and you, you fold it up on the ground so that it's, it's minimal and you might cover it with some hay or straw and put some bait out in front of it. And then these rockets have uh, heavy pipes that are connected to the net. fire them, they take off and pull the net over the top of the birds. And turkeys are pretty quick, so you have to have a device that, that is quick, but also doesn't uh, cause a lot of mortality. The Peck Ranch Wildlife Area started with nine birds. And with protection and time, the numbers increased, demonstrating that good wildlife management practices could reverse the decline. Getting the cooperation of local residents living in and around the site was critical. The second most important thing was just having appropriate habitat and, and affording some protection. Back in the early days, uh, they would go into a town and sort of make a gentleman's agreement with the people in the town. Hey, we're going to bring turkeys for you guys but you have to help us. You have to help us by maintaining habitat, leaving some food in your egg fields, and making sure that we don't have poaching problems. People signed their land up and agreed to watch and uh, protect and, and uh, report violations. With the combined effort of wildlife biologists, conservation agents, and concerned Missourians, the offspring of the Peck Ranch turkeys were transplanted and protected throughout the state. In 1960, Turkey season was open for the first time since 1937. About 700 hunters bagged 94 birds. In 1962, a survey revealed a 39% increase in turkey population size and a gain of eight counties in range over the 1942 census. In 1967, the turkey season was lengthened to seven days. Non-resident hunting was permitted 14 of the 32 counties open to hunting had turkey populations developed directly from the restocking program. Occupied range now covered 71 counties. By 1973, the turkey limit was set at two, one for each week of the season. Following three years of excellent production, the population had climbed to about 45,000. Today, Turkeys can be found in all of Missouri's 114 counties, almost all as a result of successful restocking. These communities would just embrace these turkeys and it became their goal or, or, or their uh, objective to grow these turkeys and, and, and it was a personal thing and that really made it take off. They were adaptable. Uh... People were thrilled to see them, and it, it still turned out to be a real positive, beneficial thing for the state. That's really what made the restoration work, were the citizens of Missouri and their willingness to protect wild turkeys. So that, that's, that was really a key right there.